Hey guys, it's Darius. Welcome back to InventBox, where the solution is right around the corner. And this video is going to be extra fun because we are finally going from a two-dimensional to three-dimensional. And we're going to be drawing a rotating, colorful box. Now, I've still got this triangle on my screen from the last video though you should notice that the uh, outline of the canvas is gone. I instead made it fit the size of my window. And unfortunately, that means it gets stretched when the aspect ratio is not one to one. But that's OK. It won't matter in just a few more videos. So for now, just we're going to deal with it. And of course, with the canvas, you have to remember not only to set the width and height style, but also the width and height attributes on the DOM object. And I chose to do that in a script tag right after the canvas element was put in. So I have a lot of things commented out in here, and that's because we're going to take this one step at a time, and I don't want to waste your time typing all of this out by hand. So these are the vertices that are required to make all 12 triangles of a 1x1x1 one by one by one box, and there are 36 of them, 36 vertices because that's 12 triangles times 3. Before we get there, let's automate our colors a little bit. So this is a super simple function that returns three random numbers as an array. And we're going to test it out real quick with our triangle, make sure that we are kind of spreading into a flat array. And that's kind of cool. Now we have randomized colors each time. And it means we don't have to create 36 different colors. You know, why go through the hassle when the computer can do it for us? So now about these vertices. Technically, a box has eight vertices and with those eight you could connect all the lines and create faces and you absolutely could create a box. However, if you remember that since we want to assign a different color to each face and one vertex can't have two colors, we will have some repeating and overlapping vertices on the corners so that each actually each um, vertex there's going to be three overlapping vertices so that should make sense but unfortunately it means there's a little bit of repetition so as you are going through and creating these um, these 36 points if you choose to do it yourself, then the first step is probably to sit down and come up with the order that you're going to do. You know, which face you want to do the front face first, and then go around clockwise, and then do the top and bottom. That's what I did. It really doesn't matter because you're building 12 independent triangles. So you could draw the triangles in any order, really. But you don't want to confuse yourself, so you might leave a comment up here. Front, left, back, right, you know, say what you got. Now, coming up with the triangles and coming up with the coordinates in 3D space can be a little bit much to do in your brain. So I would definitely recommend pulling out a pencil and paper and drawing that box and labeling each vertex. And once you have that, 
put those vertices in as if you were just drawing a rectangle. And by that I mean, you it's fine if you start with just f the four corners. I know that's not triangles. You know, you do the four corners, and then you go down to the next face, do four more corners, go around your box the whole way. But that's because it's really easy to take it from these four corners to a uh, to two triangles. The first triangle is obviously going to be the first point, the second point, and the third point. The second triangle is formed by the third point, the second point, and the fourth point. Practically speaking, you take your third point, copy it, and just make two of them, and take your second point and put it after, you know, in between the third and the fourth. And now you have six. And I should probably draw a little bit of ASCII art to uh, show what's going on here. And I want to say you don't have to use the order that I did, but this is how I did it. I started up here, went straight down, diagonally up, that's my first triangle, and that's a clockwise winding. And then the second triangle is 0.3, down to 2, and then across to 4. And that's also clockwise winding. So that's the deal with your vertex data. You should have some good fun coming up with those it will it might be a little bit frustrating but it also might be a fun challenge and get you thinking geometrically and spatially you could also go online and look for someone else who you know another tutorial where they have all of the points for a box and they might have the faces in a different order than i do but and they, this is C, so you'd have to remove the F at the end. In C, you put the F there to specify a floating point, but JavaScript just automatically figures it out. Anyway, um, this would be the shortcut. Of course, you're, I'm telling you, you're missing out on a lot of fun. All right, so work through these guys. And if we were going to run it right now, it would fail because we only have three colors. So we need to generate them automatically. And probably the most intuitive way to do this is create a for loop that runs six times once for each face. And then you create a color for that face. And then you have to make another for loop that, that also counts up six times because there's six vertices on that face. So in total, you're going to end up with 36 colors but each color will get repeated six times so that each, you know, all the points on one face will be the same color. And with that, you should be good. Just remember to change this number to match how many vertices you have, or you could divide your vertex length by three or your vertex data length by three. We'll see what we got. Ooh, not looking good. Hmm. 
well. I do make mistakes. All right, we'll see what the console says. I seriously think the problem was I didn't save it. OK. I guess I don't make that many mistakes. Hey, folks, make sure you save your files. Of course, we're not seeing a three-dimensional box because we are only rotating around the z-axis, and we're seeing a top-down view. Or it could be from the side. It doesn't really matter. Same thing. But that should be pretty easy, especially with these matrix rotate functions. We'll go around the x-axis and, um, hey, wait a minute. Something really goofy is going on with that depth, and it's messing with my brain. And so what's actually happening here is that GL is drawing in chronological order. That is, all of the vertices that were specified, well, I think the most recent ones get put on top. So the bottom face is probably the pink one because it's always on top. If you see it go around, as long as it's being displayed, it, it kind of takes precedence over all the others. But that's not how real boxes work. And the solution's quite simple. We just have to tell WebGL to test the depth of each vertex once it gets you know projected onto a two-dimensional uh, two-dimensional screen. And so it's not it's not exactly the z depth per se because you know the box is rotating around and the z axis is kind of you know it's all it's all sort of relative but just it's the it's the depth it is kind of z axis if based on the screen the y is still up and down the x is still left and right and the z is still in to the screen and out of the screen it's just you got a few different coordinate systems going on here. But the important thing to remember is just that we can tell it to enable a depth test. And that will make sure that when two vertices pass over each other, the one that is closer to the camera will take precedence instead of the one that was drawn or uh, piped through the buffer first. All right, enough talk. Let's see how that, I probably over explained that to death. And this is exactly what we expected it to do. So at this point, you can have a little fun and see what sort of interesting shades of colors you can get out of your boxes. That's kind of cool. They're all green except for the gray one. I feel like there's a face on this that you never get to see, and that's kind of sad. You never get to see that face. <laughs> oh well, um, have some fun with this. I think we have done plenty in this tutorial. We've made it into the three-dimensional world. Remember to enable depth test because it's not enabled by default. Otherwise, you will see some very odd, odd-looking drawings. And if it looks like your triangles are off, say that you for put uh, you forgot a negative sign somewhere. 
you know, you'll end up with uh, instead of square faces, you may see some tri you know, triangles in there, and you'll have to double check your work. And surprisingly, I think when I did this, I got them all right the first time. So just diligence is key here, or copy it from online. But you know how copying and pasting is. You don't really know for sure if it's right. If you copy something from online and it doesn't work right for you, well, there's not much you can do about that. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, things that maybe I skipped over, just ask them in the comments. Thank you for watching and have fun with this one.